Good morning and welcome to a new Airways Magazine video. I'm right now in Vancouver, Canada. I'm heading to the Harbour Air Maintenance Centre to check out and see the latest news about the new e-plane, the new e-beaver that is aiming to introduce electric aviation to the world. So come with me. I think the, the main goal of the project right now is to develop the fully electric technologies such that they can be certified on the current platform, which is the, the DHC-2 Beaver, and develop pathways to certification so those technologies can be adapted to other platforms and hopefully one day scaled up to larger aircraft. So the current state, we've got the prototype airplane um, down in the hangar now, you saw that. It's done 78 flights so far. We just replaced all the batteries in it with a newer, better battery by um, one of the battery manufacturers we're working with. And uh, those batteries have some tweaks made that we can uh, do uh, battery conditioning and stuff. And they have a little bit more power per weight. We don't know what we don't know. So every time we fly this thing, we learn something new. We learn new problems, come up with new solutions. So the more we can work out now, that we put all that uh, knowledge into the certified one so we don't have to change the certified one a whole lot later. There are probably a couple of different challenges that, that are really significant for sustainable aviation technologies such as, as full electrification. One of them, of course, everybody knows is the battery energy density. It's not where we really need it to be to fully commercialize a product, but it's not far off. But there are cells that are in testing right now at 350 watt hours per kilogram. So we're getting almost a 50% increase in energy density and it's gonna be available in the next couple of years. Also the technical challenge we have as an operator, Harbor Air will want to fly at eight, 12 times a day doing tours and we add heat every time we uh, discharge it during flight or when we charge it and we're going to have to find a way to evacuate that heat from the system or we're only going to get a couple flights out of it a day. The technical, uh, you know, how do we make it work from an operational perspective, but then there's the actual, how does the operator use it and it be functionally useful for them. That's, that's a big technical challenge. So the engine is uh, in our prototype is the Magni 500. We're soon going to be getting a Magni 650 for the CERT version. And um, Magni X is developing that motor now. They've been doing testing. They're going through all of the, the hoops to make that a certified electric motor under Part 33. It'll be a, um, the first one of the first electric motors out there. They've been awesome to work with. They started off in Australia. They've now moved up to near right near Payne Field. So they're way closer than they used to be. They've been a great group to work with and stuff. The two teams get along well. We're doing everything we can to try and make sure this thing is safe, certified, and working. Our forecast is the end of 2026 with what we know from Transport Canada, the FAA, and Yaza, and all the battery and motor manufacturers. Because um, Magniex is getting a type certificate for the engine, we actually cannot complete our installation of the engine unless they have their type certificate completed with the FAA and then validated by Transport Canada before we can obtain our STC. We're hoping and targeting 2026, but if those things don't line up, uh, it could be delayed, but targeting 2026. 